Since 1981, Motor Discovery has been providing turnkey adventures all around the globe. Our USA program offers world-class guided and self-guided custom tours, adventure bike rentals, and immersion training programs. Let our decades of experience be your guide and ride your next BDR with Moto Discovery. So as we head into our second decade, a big goal of the BDR organization is to improve and expand on the experiences and resources we provide to our community. We're always listening to the community, and what we've heard is that BDR riders would love to see more than just one route per year from us, and they really want some routes that loop. So in addition to the classic BDR routes, we are excited to introduce the BDR-X, a shorter BDR-style route that loops. A BDR-X could be an excursion off of an existing route or something entirely new in an area where we're yet to bring a BDR to. These routes will be designed to only take a few days to ride, and we plan to roll out multiple BDR-Xs in the coming years, starting right here in Wyoming with the Red Desert BDR-X. Just prior to filming the Wyoming Expedition, a few of the BDR team members and Chris Floyd from the Wyoming Outdoor Rec Office headed out with the production crew to ride and film the very first BDR-X. The Red Desert BDR-X begins at the start of the Wyoming BDR in the small town of Bags. And then it heads northwest on a 165 mile adventure through some of the most incredible high desert terrain. The roads are primitive and include a good amount of sand, rocks, ruts, and even some challenging ledges. In good weather, this route should be considered intermediate. But like most of Wyoming, some terrain can be almost unrideable when wet. There are epic views throughout the Red Desert, but a major highlight is Adobe Town, a highly protected area with some really diverse landscape, including ravines, gulches, badlands, canyons, definitely worth getting off the bike and exploring on foot. The Red Desert Loop can be ridden in a day or two, depending on your riding style. But we got a late start that day and decided to camp out on Delaney Point. Truthfully, I cannot remember a more epic camping spot. We were perched high up at the end of the point and we were surrounded by these steep drop-offs. And the canyon looked simply magnificent and it was filled with rock formations that expanded out into the distance as far as you could see. As awesome as that campsite was, we found out the hard way about the infamous Wyoming winds that night. After a sleepless night of our tents just being relentlessly thrashed around, we packed up early and headed back down to Bags for a really good breakfast, and then we headed off to meet the rest of the BDR team at the Boyer Ranch. I'm so excited to finally uh, be here in Wyoming. This is our 11th route, and this route has been in development three to four years. This is probably been the longest that it's ever taken us to create a route so it's been a really challenging one for us to do but I'm very excited about it just the remoteness it's one of the most remote places that we've ever done a BDR. Wyoming is a very special place we have a lot of wide open spaces uh, we're not nearly as crowded as some other states when it comes to recreation that's something we treasure um, and we know that uh, there's you know invariably going to be some kind of growth and change over time but we just want it to be done the right way. What I'm proud of is what we already have and our commitment to trying to maintain as much of that as we possibly can. 
The Wyoming BDR was developed in partnership with the Wyoming Office of Outdoor Recreation and Tourism. The seven counties along the route uh, fully supported the project and embraced our mission of helping to boost local economies with a sustainable new form of tourism. We're out there trying to bring economic relief to small communities along the BDRs and that's a really important part of our, our brand and we're, we're really serious about delivering on that. This BDR route will bring riders from across the country and around the world to Wyoming in the coming years. And not just to the usual tourist hotspots, but to rural communities that will benefit greatly from a positive economic impact. The small businesses along the route that offer food, lodging, fuel and supplies We'll see a big influx in tourism dollars in the coming years and in turn hopefully will become BDR advocates and help us in our efforts to keep rural backcountry roads open and help us preserve access for adventure motorcycle travel. The first three days of this trip were quite hard. Our film crew worked so well. I'm confident that this is going to be one of the best movies that we have ever produced. There's basically four people on the media team. I'm kind of in charge of them and they're my crew. And I tell you what, these guys know how to hustle. We've got a pretty good system dialed in as the production crew. The most important thing is we want to tell a story. My day job in Breckenridge, Colorado is a freelance videographer. On this trip, I'll be doing the drone flying for the Wyoming BDR. My bike's completely full with stuff, so <laughs> it's going to be slow going, but it'll be OK. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Monty Trump, no relation. And I was the support vehicle slash chef slash mechanic. Having a support vehicle is vital because you have such a little time to film and ride. You have to have it on, on, on a trip where you're filming. This was a special trip for me because I got to spend a lot of time with Bryce Stevens. He is the guy that started or created the Washington route and came to us with that idea. And he and I used to ride a lot together in the first maybe three or four years. And then for a variety of reasons, he was not able to do the filming projects with us. So this was his, his big comeback. This is a route he'd been working on for four years. Um, and it had, we thought it had the potential to be a really good route. I'm pretty excited. This is my first route again. This will be the 11th and we're finally getting to film it and ride it together. Finally on this 11th expedition we have an equal amount of men and women riding. Wendy, she's a BMW Academy riding instructor. My name is Wendy Nasons and I'm a motorcycle instructor in training at the BMW Performance Center. My expectations for my first BDR were that, would, that it would be very intense. I was super nervous that I wasn't going to be able to do it. And of course, Jocelyn Snow is back. This is my second BDR filming expedition. When I was packing up in California, getting ready to head out to Wyoming, I kind of threw my back out. Injuring my back right before a big ride is, is that wasn't ideal. <laughs> and it's, I've, I found myself moving a little slower, getting on and off the bike, just to try to not upset my muscles and keep them from spasming. The Boyer Ranch was an amazing place. They have a main house with some rooms, they have some cabins. They also have a garage where if you have some quick things that you need to do to prepare for the trip. Coming from a big city like Chicago, seeing bags was a culture shock. It was extremely isolated and remote. Roll into a lot of these small communities and it's going to feel very small. We don't have a lot of big cities or towns in Wyoming. Our routes bring a huge amount of tourism dollars to these small, less advantaged rural communities and it really makes a big impact. And I hope that those locals come to really love it and embrace it and to really enjoy the motorcycle clientele that comes through and spends money at their little stores and uh, restaurants and gas stations and that. The long-term strategy is to help diversify the state's economy because we want our economy to be more resilient and the lows aren't so low and the highs, they can be as high as they want. We just, we just don't want a roller coaster economy. We're on a really cool dirt road right now. Woo, it's gorgeous. One of the things about Wyoming is it's the 10th largest state by land, but as far as population goes, it's at the bottom. 
It's very remote and the towns are very small. But, uh, when you're out and away from these towns, you're in the middle of nowhere and you can be without cell service, you can uh, get trapped by weather, you know, if you had a mechanical failure, same thing, you're, you're in dire straits. So remote in Wyoming is more remote than other states for sure. On our way to the start, I had a, a really near miss with the antelope. They are out there. There's a ton of them in Wyoming. So keep your eyes looking side to side and your speed down. Be careful because sometimes they, they want to cross in front of you and that's what they're trying to do. So you may slow down and let them go their way if you need to, but just, just be respectful of the wildlife and give them their space. So this is one of those great uh, moderate level roads that's not quite double track, but not quite the wide gravelly stuff. I'm pleased the riding's actually better than I remember it and everybody seems to be smiling and we've had no muck to, to speak of, a couple wet puddles. It's been really fun. The terrain is nice, pretty smooth, gravel. The mountains are amazingly beautiful. Scenery, you can't beat it. Getting my BDR legs underneath. So before coming on this trip, I spent seven months at the BMW Performance Center drilling in the fundamentals of body position and how to get through obstacles and that sort of thing. And so that really saved me for this trip. Wendy! <laughs> Day one, I could tell that Wendy was pretty nervous. She's done a lot of training and now she's out here in the real world and we're riding some difficult terrain and a huge variety of terrain. On my first trip, we came here in September. We thought it was a pretty safe time to do this, and sure enough, we got hit by a storm. I mean, I nearly froze to death just, just riding through the state on highways trying to get to the start. So I'd say it's, it's the weather is, is probably the biggest thing I've learned from this and been the most shocking is that if it gets wet during the riding season and if the winter hits early, you can be, you can be done. Winding through this dirt road and there's some green grass on the sides, a little two-track and kind of playing and having fun, some fun turns. What a way to start off. I'm, I'm so excited to see what else this Wyoming BDR has in store. Thank you for that. That's what I think. That was some awesome riding. Those just sticky dirt, almost bank turns, lots of traction. It's just fun, twisty through, through the woods. It was just really amazing. Now all of a sudden, it opens up and there's all these aspen trees. It's beautiful. In the morning we were in kind of open ranch land, which was fun, but now we're finally into some pine forest, more classic BDR type terrain. Some nice, easy, relaxing, flowing corners. So it's been a nice change from this morning. So I'd say we're about halfway through the day. We're taking a short rest and getting ready to divide the team into two. We've got an expert section to my right and an easier main route that's going this direction. Whatever it is, I think there's an adventure up ahead. <laughs> the road went from a fairly graded road to this hill of sharp rocks and uh, I mean like layers of rocks. What'd that rock do to you? This thing weighs more than you do. What happened? Uh, everything's good, except my brake pedal. It, it used to be a brake pedal. These tools come in handy, huh? I think. Everything's so slippery. This part is supposed to be over here. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if it works, okay. Hmm. Okay. I better stop before I break the woman's motorcycle. No, it's all good. <laughs> it was a good 30 minutes of rocks 
every type. The big round ones, the roly-poly baby heads, the sharp ones, what a blast. So we just did the first expert section. You know, I'm pretty happy because we made it through, but at the same time, I'm absolutely gassed. It was hard, it was really hard. Although that section was challenging, it was so worth it because at the top we were rewarded with beautiful scenery, alpine meadows that you could just roll through and, and really get into a rhythm. So we are on the top of Bridger Peak. It's 11,000 feet and the air is real thin. I was going to nickname this section I nickname it on the rocks. One, because it's so rocky, and two, because when you're done, you need a gin and tonic. <laughs> when we started the descent, it was really cool, because there's still lots of rocks and roots, but you could get a flow to it. My smile was frozen on my face all the way down through this section. That's gonna be a gem right there, either direction. What a lot of fun. That section was one of the most fun sections I can remember on any BDR. Roots, rocks, it was like full on enduro course on big bikes. Bryce and I were just laughing in our headsets. Oh my God, this is like an ORV park or some trail that was engineered for awesomeness on a big bike. It was one of the top sections ever. And you know you're having a good time when you can't get the, the grin off your face. This is unbelievable, so much fun. There's no fresh sandwiches, but uh, we're gonna have some apple and sardines. Hefty prices, but you know, this food's worth it on the road when you're super hungry. And now we're in an area where there was once a forest fire. This section feels like it goes on for a while. But it is really interesting to notice how all the, the vegetation and the ground cover is coming back, especially these purple and yellow flowers off the side of the road here. There's a lot of pine trees that are dead along the way. What, what's that from? This area suffered from beetle kill just taking down a lot of the pine trees. And you can see there's active logging and burning uh, along the path that we were working. It's, it's kind of ugly and a little disheartening. There's probably 15 miles of that, which is unfortunate. But the riding's fun. It's just that the scenery has been through, uh, through hell. Look at these little trees. They're starting up again. And there's the Rob Roy Reservoir off to my right, 9,500 feet. We're looking for our campsite. Tonight on the menu is the Indian cuisine. We've got the uh, vegan dal, we have some curry, uh, chicken, rice, and Indian naan. This is the first time I've ever seen a moose. Every day we're encountering all different types of wildlife. Antelope, deer, bear, skunks, moose, they're all out there and it's just, it's beautiful watching them. I see a big puddle. Uh, Bryce says don't go through puddles here because they're like bottomless muck pits. But I have a reputation for smashing through water on BDRs, so I'm gonna try it, give it a whirl.
this is not necessarily the hardest BDR, but it's up there. I've been trying to think of how to describe it, and, and I think this route is, can be described as consistently challenging. Almost every day there's something that challenges you, whether it's sand or rocks or ruts. The riding was spectacular, really flowy roads and pretty much just had a smile on my face most of the time. About an hour into our ride on day two and we have another flat tire. I think Jocelyn's got a uh, little tear in the sidewall of her tire and there uh, those guys are back there trying to fix it up. So we've been looking for the puncture and we unfortunately we found it in the worst place you can have it which is right on the sidewall. It's really hard to repair. So we're um, gonna get out our cruise tools kit and our stop and go plug kit and we're gonna see if we can confirm that's the hole and we're gonna try and plug it. Yeah, so we put a snake and we put one more on top. I think that's what you do. Yeah. That's, what that's a gash. About. It's unstable. So we're on the Towner Lake Road. Towner Lake Road is a uh, rolling, short, sweet, rocky road. Not loose rocks, embedded rocks. You gotta kinda bounce off of and, and avoid. Over the years, I've spent a lot of time in the Snowy Range, and it's one of my favorite areas. You get a little bit of that alpine feel, lakes, streams, moose everywhere. That section is close to Colorado, has those epic mountain views, but there's something else there. It, it feels like you're in a different state. There's less people, less crowded, and just some stunning vistas. I really recommend getting up there. Now we're in the snowy range looking at this 180 degree view of, of nothing but sheer cliffs. It's incredible. Uh, this is Pretty amazing view of the snowy mountain up here. It's exactly 12,000 feet tall. So uh, we're pretty high and it feels good to be nice and cool up in the mountains. Uh, back in 1955, uh, an airline, uh, an airplane carrying passengers actually slammed into the side of this mountain here. It's a great viewpoint. We're stopping to see it's windy, but this is a great spot. Uh, right up here is Medicine Bow Peak, which is the, the tallest mountain in the Snowy Range area. Okay, so here we are at the creek crossing. Uh, Bryce has been talking about it all day today. When they were scouting, uh, they've never been able to uh, get through it because it was very deep. I know we can do it. We checked it out, saw that there were some challenges with the way that the cement blocks were separated. Uh, things like this, water crossings, or things that are technical, sometimes I think it's better to just roll it while you're warmed up. So I didn't go pre-scout it like everybody else did. I just rolled up and went for it. And uh, there's a little bit of a drop off and a little bit of a step up on this other side, but the water crossing wasn't so bad. It was just getting into it and getting out of it, which were a little challenging, but um, I had fun. I'm glad I made it. It was a huge drop off into the water and then climb up the other end. Unfortunately, I killed the engine on the way up. I forgot that the bike has amazing technology that will hold you on a hill until you can take off. It felt so good. Every single person when they got to the other side of that water crossing had a huge smile on their face. It was amazing. Doesn't matter how you do it, but if you get across, you get across.
perhaps sometimes it's better not to even know what's coming ahead and just roll with it and instead of like build it up in your head and sometimes it's not as bad as you might think. We could do it again five more times. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to. <laughs> really, the whole day was fun. It was either really amazing vistas or just really fun, slow, technical riding. So the whole day was wonderful. What happened? So I think I clipped the, uh, the tree with my pannier. So just a little tip over, nothing. Okay. Nothing exciting. Do you want some help picking that up? Yes, please. Well, we got a little issue here. We can stand on it and ride over it. Well, no, we can get a rock under here and yeah. just break the end off at least. Well, hold it down and you jump on it. Yes. Good, good engineering team. You're in the woods and, you know, there are trees down and it's super rocky and it's technical. And it was amazing to see the bike just take every step all the way up each rock. It was amazing. The ride up to Kennedy Peak was fantastic. It was just incredible views, a fun road getting up there. The most challenging point on the trip so far has been the switchbacks going up to Canada Peak. And I got through it by looking through the turns and just remembering all of the training that I've done at the BMW Performance Center. This amazing view, 360. The whole of Wyoming is right here. <laughs> the road is probably moderate condition. It's got rocks, but it's not technically difficult, but it's also not smooth and the traction can be loose at times, so just budget an hour and you should be good. I think Wendy's taken me up on my offer to ride her bike down the exposure section. She doesn't love heights and switchbacks downhill with, uh, with some exposure is not her jam, so I'm gonna ride her bike down and then hoof it up and then ride my bike down. Fear you know, white heights. knuckle, it's a fear of heights, so everything sort of closes in and then I feel like I'm just gonna black out, which is not cool. <laughs> there goes Paul. The long walk up the hill. Wendy's got her bike here. She's all good. Yay, you're back with us. And I feel so much better. Oh, oh your good. Good job. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Are you hungry? Yeah. We had to change our plans. Uh, today was the second day in a row we were going to go camping, but today was a really long day and uh, the team members want to uh, take a shower and have a nice sleep tonight. So we on the fly changed plans and it looks like a hotel nearby has uh, rooms for us available. So part of the group will go there and some of us are going to finish the route and uh, hopefully tomorrow everybody is going to be ready to roll again. It requires a lot of stamina. We're on an adventure, we're on a journey, and when it gets hard, you can't focus on that. You have to focus on the greater good and, and what you're out there doing. So we've been riding a road called that we call the Mystery 115. Found these amazing buildings in this old ghost town called Carbon. There's probably 20 other buildings. Oh, wow. They're a lot smaller. Some of them are probably homes. Uh, this building we're looking at was a general store, and it was also a bank that was incorporated on December 9th, 1881. Cemetery was most active from 1868 to 1902. And then that was the first burial of the stable boss that was killed by the Indians while he was searching for lost jewels. We just left the Carbon Cemetery. Now we're coming into this wind farm. A picture-perfect ending to day two on the Wyoming BDR. At the beginning, I was like, man, this is going to be a long trip. Um, how am I going to make it through seven or eight days of riding at this level the whole time? If I was to change something for myself, I would probably try and hotel it. Well, as far as the lodging goes, you've got to be prepared for anything. You know, it's not high-end and it's not camping, it's somewhere in the middle. And if you need to get a good night's sleep, it's better than sleeping in your tent, for me anyway. I'm doing a bed bug inspection <laughs> because 
those things, they, they'll roll with you for a long time. But I, I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> okay, it's early in the morning. We are in Medicine Bow starting day three. We're a little bit behind schedule, as is typical for, for day three. But uh, we just had a wonderful breakfast here at the Virginian. We've got a little more mileage to make up today, so we're getting an early start. I think today we're riding 265 miles, something like that. 265 miles. So we get a ride, smart. It's gonna be a tough day. So we are approaching the Shirley Mountains. We'll be riding these rural country roads here. And then we will start climbing up the edge of the Shirley's with a pretty precipitous drop off. And the name of the road we're on is Difficulty Road. So I'm a little excited about that. Well, the ride so far this morning is beautiful through these rolling hills, the mountains in the background, but it seems like we're gonna be getting on a more technical train going up the mountain soon. Wendy decided she's gonna skip the technical section, so we split the group and two of them are gonna meet up with us later in Alcova. I didn't feel safe going up Shirley Mountain on the switchbacks with the with the exposure, and Jocelyn was kind enough to come with me because you always want to buddy up on rides like this. Injuring my back right before a big ride is, is that wasn't ideal. <laughs> but what's interesting, I guess, is once I get in the zone and I'm riding and I'm seeing some of this beautiful scenery and having a good time on the tracks and talking on the intercom with my friends. I actually kind of forget about it. <laughs> and so I think riding is the best medicine. Probably halfway up into the Shirley Mountains. We're looking down to the north, this is what's called Shirley Basin. Uh, one of the coolest sections was the Shirley Mountains Loop, which was some interesting landscape because we were in kind of a, a high desert area, and it was a little bit different from any other section on the route. The second half of it was just some fun, flowy two tracks and ruts. Just really had a chance to blast through this section of Wyoming that I'd never seen and really enjoyed it. It was a little bit ruddy, a little bit sandy, a little bit rocky, super fun, kind of fast flowing road. I uh, just really enjoyed it. Like this is the BDR gold for me. I think it was the right choice to skip the very beginning part with the elevation for me, but the rest of it was just amazing riding and I'm super glad that we got to hook into that. For my first BDR being in Wyoming, I was really curious what the terrain was going to be like. We've had a lot of different terrain. We've had ruts and rocky sections and water crossings. And then we'll have these moments where the gravel road just sort of opens up and it's just big sky country. There's gonna be lots of wide open spaces, lots of different colors in the landscape. It goes through a very scenic part of the state um, a part of the state that is not overloved. In other words, it's, it's a place where you're still going to have a lot of solitude. And I think that a lot of the route is going to be like that. All right, so this is your gas stop. We're in the town of Alcova, and this is Sloan's. They serve breakfast pizzas inside there. We just had one of those, so it's like a pizza with sausage and eggs and everything, so that's kind of cool. And then the last thing I noticed in there is that they have little Ziploc bags with lunches to go. So you get like a, a sandwich and some chips and stuff like that and a little Ziploc to go bag for lunch. So whether you eat here or on the road, this is definitely one of those places you're gonna stop at when you're doing the Wyoming VDR. So we're traveling past an area known as Devil's Gate, and that's off to the right. But this section was once part of the Oregon Trail, that historic passageway across the United States that so many people traveled on went through this area here. Devil's Gate is over here to my right, in between these two different rock formations. The 
now we're heading on this two track going out to the beaver rim okay this is definitely got some sandy and muddy sections so you got to be on your toes getting up there was a little tricky and there was a, there was some squirrely sandy rocky climbs to get up to where we needed to go but again it was worth it it was hard it was technical there was a lot of sand and then big rocks but i made it so i'm super excited um, in the training at the Performance Center, they really do prepare us for this type of terrain, but it's a totally different world when you get out here into the real world and you're actually doing it, but it's awesome. I love it. Yay, yeah. So well. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> as we made our way up to the Beaver Rim, huge view for as far as you could see, and then this track just twists and winds along the edge of the rim. It was such a blast. You had to kind of be on point and really pay attention. And it was difficult paying attention because all of a sudden we opened up to this canyon, you know, along the rim. It was just stunning. But this is rolling double track with sagebrush all over and stuff in the middle and ruts on both sides. <laughs> Felt like I was riding with my friends. I was riding with my friends, of course, but you know what I mean. It wasn't. I didn't feel like we were working, and it just invigorated. You just got it, this extra energy, and we were just having a, a, a great time riding through those rolling two tracks. And you know, everywhere you were in the, on those two tracks, you just had this beautiful panoramic view. It was pretty special. It's this perfect two track. And it just meanders right along this rim that has these expansive views, super flowy fun factor. I mean, we were just talking the whole time in the headsets about how much fun it was. Some people might get poop partway through and want to bail, but if you like this kind of riding, I think you'll just have a great time from end to end. But it's long. This is the east-west cross from one mountain range to another. And it kind of had to happen that way. The days have been really long on this trip. And some of the folks uh, are getting a little tired after eight or nine hours, so we are gonna split the group and we're gonna send a few people back to the hotel a little early while we do the second half of Beaver Rim right now. There are several bail points, uh, two major ones in the middle. I don't need 20 more miles of sand. Surprise sand. Those are points where you can bail out to the highway to the south and then continue west to Atlantic City. It's nice to have these, because otherwise you'd be stuck in here and you don't have any options, but these are both nice roads. We were challenged with this route to connect up the mountain ranges in the south and the mountain ranges in the north. The rest of the state and the center part of the state is high, vast desert. We discovered some gems like the Beaver Rim that, that became our signature uh, piece of the crossover, and it worked out great, but that was a real challenge. You know, if we didn't have this cliff to follow, it would be pretty monotonous, right? You'd feel like you're just out in this Serengeti or whatever, but here... You get these big reveals. You come up a hill and then it reveals this canyon. You know, some of the team bailed out at sort of the halfway point back there, and I feel like they're really missing out on the best part of this, so... My suggestion would be if you come up here and ride this BDR, do the entire beaver rim because it really gets pretty epic. If you like this kind of riding, you'll get miles and miles of enjoyment riding up and down these hills alongside the beaver rim. Getting a little tired, so it got a little squirrely. Took a, took a little detour into the sage, but luckily got back on track. Um, definitely, I mean, probably the most unique section so far on this route. Um, at one point, could barely see the track. It was, it was just, it was blissful. It was beautiful. We're kind of on a, kind of a two track with a lot of really deep ruts. Ina chose a line that had a deep rut and she didn't want to go, drop into the rut. So there was a tiny little patch at the top that she was trying to kind of ride along and, and finally just collapsed and the bike just, I mean, I, I almost ran over her head, number one. I was so scared. I had to swerve around her head and uh, I just literally dropped my bike on the side to run back because I really thought she got hurt. Uh, but 
she is so, she's such a trooper, man. I mean, she was up before I could even get to help her pick up her bike. Yeah, I mean, it, it didn't uh, feel like a bad fall, you know? I think it's all the yoga I do. Like, it just, I just you, get up, you, like, I don't, nothing is hurting except the mirror, the mirror is gone. Yeah. So I'm hoping I can steal a mirror from our spare bike. I'm just glad I didn't roll, roll over your head. <laughs> I know. That was awesome though, well man, what a fun section, jeez. Yep, for sure. However, we're like on the 13th hour <laughs> of riding today, so definitely like, you know, making mistakes so late into the evening uh, is very possible. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into the hotel and having some dinner. For sure. Some of the most challenging days or sections of the route are the ones you would remember the most. For me, that was definitely the highlight, the whole trip. I think what I remember the most is just being with my friends and not working at that particular moment, but just having so much fun. And that's like the moments you live for in the BDR. That was a day and a half. Wow. It was amazing. It was beautiful. Beautiful and long. Hopefully the longest day of the trip. Uh, it's the longest of the trip. And the yeah. longest of any BDRs that I've done so far. So, wow. yeah, man, it took, it took some stamina, but uh, definitely worth it, definitely worth it. It was beautiful right to the last couple of miles. Sunset, it was gorgeous. I would guess that would be considered more than one section. I wouldn't advise anyone to ride 13 hours on, on that, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of good memories. Atlantic City was definitely the highlight for me in terms of lodging. If, if you picture an old mining town from the frontier days, this is postcard perfect. Wild Bill, we stayed in his uh, lodge called Miner's Delight in Atlantic City. Uh, Wild Bill has lived in that little mining town 22 years and he bought the lodge three years ago and so he's definitely looking forward to welcoming all the BDR riders to his lodge. And this is the town of South Pass City, an old historic town that's been sort of turned into a, a living museum. It's really, really well done the way they put it together with all the old buildings having been restored and actual full-size dioramas or models of the interiors of shops and bedrooms and dining rooms and gives you a glimpse of what life may have looked like back in the 1800s when this town was a, a much more thriving and prosperous city. So we are here on the Wyoming BDR uh, in the southern end of the Wind River Range Mountains and we're in a very twisty kind of fast uh, gravel road. And it's a very high traffic area, there's a lot of activity, we've seen side by sides and cars. So this is a place where it's really important to ride right, which means stay on the far right hand side of the road and don't be tempted to cut corners dipping over to the left side because that's where the problem can occur. So please stay in the far right the entire time all of the time, but especially in high traffic areas like this. This appears to be one of those really fun pavement sections that you get on a BDR route occasionally. It's a real nice break from riding in the dirt when you get to find a road like this. Great views, a dozen or so hairpin curves, good asphalt. This is a primo section of Wyoming BDR pavement right here. It only takes about five minutes to get down from there, but really one of the best pavement sections on a BDR ever. You're gonna really enjoy that one. 
We're gonna go to a place called Sinks Canyon, this river that flows into the ground. So there's where it goes in, there's where it comes out. We are at the the rise of the Popo Agi. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Bryce, it's pronounced Popoja. But it's uh, at Sinks Canyon State Park. We went to the other end where the water goes underground, travels through limestone fissures, and then bubbles up here at the spring. And the fish love it for whatever reason. But this is a pretty cool spot. Wind up and just cast okay. it way out there. Yeah, I want to get my big wind up. <laughs> there's wind <been> still. <laughs> I understand that. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah. That's so cool. Oh my oh, look, cool. god. That is so cool. Look at these towering rock walls in front of us. Just beautiful. Uh, you know, today the highlight is the descent from Cottonwood Pass down to Tinsley. The rest of the day we're just going to be putting in our time to get there. But it's, it's going to finish really well. There's a lot of mountain ranges, but also a lot of the state is taken by oil development. So it was a challenge for our route development team uh, to figure out the best route. Oil, gas, and coal extraction are the biggest part of the Wyoming economy still. You'll definitely see some of the extraction industries at work. We can see the team stopped here now at this warning sign that says poison gas area. Do not enter when the lights are flashing. What kind of gas is it? Just poisonous? Poisonous from what? I don't know. That doesn't really matter. It's poisonous. Yeah, I, don't I guess really we don't want to. So. I gotta tell you what, there was some poisonous gas in the hotel last yeah, night. Yeah, there definitely. You know what? <laughs> Maybe that's where they store Bryce's socks. It could be. That could be, huh? Oh man. <laughs> All right, we're on to the adventure. All adventure. right, off we go. I think this is probably the most remote BDR of them all. The whole time, you just feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. Even when you stop in the little towns, you blink and you're already out of the town and back into the woods, so. At any point on the BDR, you can feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. If you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the real world, the Wyoming BDR is definitely a place to just relax and have a good time. We've made it past the halfway point. <laughs> and all the bikes still rolling. Everybody's still going. Really? It seems like we've been <laughs> at it for like 10 days. Really? What are you doing down there, Paul? Napping. Napping. Little shade nap. It was great to get the support of BMW Motorrad USA on this Wyoming project. I mean, it just made sense that the brand that is so deeply rooted in the adventure riding community for four decades would team up with BDR. The decision to have their guest rider be one of the instructors from the BMW US Riding Academy worked out really well. I mean, what a great opportunity to showcase the BMW GS in the environment it was really built to ride in. And then having one of their trained instructors behind the bars, it worked out really great. The bike that I'm riding for this trip is the 2021 BMW R1250 GS Rally. It is handling like a dream. None of the BDR team had ever met Wendy before, besides a brief phone call to help prep her for the experience. So when we learned that she had never done a multi-day adventure ride, let alone a thousand mile expedition before, honestly, we weren't really sure what to expect. Sure, she had the riding skills, but traveling for two weeks off your motorcycle in the backcountry that requires a whole other set of skills. So the reason that I'm at the BDR now, the reason that I decided to take this trip, you always say yes to the adventure, you know, make life a ride. And 
After training at the Performance Center, some of the best training that you can do is seat time and peg time. Get out there into the real world and do that riding. And then also, I really want to be an inspiration for people. You know, I have such limited off-road experience. She was a bit nervous at the start of the ride, but once her first time jitter settled down, Wendy found her BDR groove and fit right in with the team. It was really impressive to watch her progression over the course of the expedition. You could see that she was putting all of her training experience to the test. Wyoming has everything she had trained for and, and a lot more. Eyes up, stay loose, you can get through anything. I think Wendy really benefited from the experience and with this newfound BDR perspective, I think she's gonna go back to the Performance Center, a more experienced and more inspirational instructor. Tensley seemed like an artsy little town. The main street was bustling. Rolling into town, you instantly get a sense uh, that this is a, a fun, funky little area. Uh, we stopped downtown, had an ice cream, had a coffee. One of the places we stayed at was the Tensley Brewery. We have obviously beer, great beer. We have camping that used to be kind of an ad hoc mess, and this year we we cleaned it up and put in actual um, camp spaces. Uh, we have brewery food. We quite often have food trucks on the weekends. Tons of live music uh, pretty much every weekend all summer. And it's uh, just a really cool little community melting pot and uh, meeting place out there. It was a really cool experience to, to be able to just camp so close to town but feel like you were disconnected from it just enough. And I'd love to go back and spend a little bit of time in town and see what else there is to offer. Make sure you stop there and just explore the little town. Uh, that's like one of the things I wished we had more time for is to explore Tensleep. We started out with uh, what we call the old highway and it starts at the fish hatchery um, near Lee Creek in the canyon. We go about 13 miles up the old highway. We've um, been discovered by the sport climbing crowd, and so we're probably one of the top two or three spots nationally for sport climbing. Justin was the lead guy that day and took us through uh, some of the trails that he has contributed to the BDR. I'm happy to share the trails because the ones we are riding are all public roads. You know, there's already the public out there, and. Uh, yeah, I, I like showing off my backyard, and so I'm, I'm happy to do so. I, I can't believe what you guys and gals can do on those giant bikes. I, I can't do any of that. Uh, it, was, it was really fun, and um, seeing some of the rocks and sand that uh, you guys were handling on the big bikes was really cool. I'm on a Husqvarna 501. We don't have a ton of single track around here, but we have hundreds of miles of two track, and so it's a great bike for the two track. You know, he's definitely a small bikes guy and he was up there up front. I, we put the two Husqvarna's uh, up front and I was trying to keep up with him. But yeah, it's just always so fun to, you know, have them join us and, and get a taste of uh, riding the BDR with the whole team. I'm uh, surrounded by three million acres of public land in Tensleep. We have two million acres of BLM and a million acres of national forest right out my front door. So we spend uh, as much time as possible out in the dirt or on the snow. We are right on the eastern edge of the Bighorn Mountains. Um, you're looking out over the Cloud Peak Wilderness area. Ride right, side by side. So you roll up to a closed gate, you open it, you ride through, you close it. If you come up to the gate and it's open, you leave it open.
That was so fun. Oh my god. That was, that was a blast. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for that. I love that stuff. That was a fun, fun section with some ruts and rocks. I was taking it slow in the corners because you know this is the fifth day. I just want to make it to the end. So I was following you, rolling the helmet camera, as we were going through some of those water bars, and you skied <laughs> off of one of them and landed in the depression. <laughs> And that bike hit so hard that I'm pretty sure the geology department's gonna pick that up on the Richter scale <laughs> at the Wyoming University. <laughs> it hit so hard. And coming into the forest with all the trees lined on both sides, super tight twisties, and, and you come around each corner and it's like, surprise, something different, you know? The rock garden's the did same. Did it feel like this? It did, it did, it did. <laughs> That's the way to do it up That's here. That's the way to do it, man, you know? I don't have to worry about balance. <laughs> That's just so cool. So you're from Fensley? Yeah. It's awesome to have Jocelyn on the trip. She's one of those people who can come up and uh, talk to anybody and find a common topic and they would be chatting with her and loving her like from the moment they meet her. That was me. Where are you going? Just out for a drive. It's great to ride these technical and challenging roads and, and see some of the scenery, but the best part for me is always the people and it's the people that we're riding with and the people that we meet along the way. This looks like a kick in the pants. I wish I'd come with you. Well, there's another seat. <laughs> yeah. You guys mind if I hook a ride? <laughs> Pleasure, thank you. you What's bet. your name? Marty. Marty Jocelyn. Glad to meet you. Pleasure. I got to ride with Wendy a lot in the first couple of days and it was pretty interesting seeing uh, her perspective on things. She comes from the training school which is closed course, lots of slow speed technical riding. It's on the BDR, it's just coming at you all day, hour after hour and the obstacles get mixed up. We were on the headsets and she was like, oh my God, sand and rocks, that's not fair. You know, and it was just, there's roots and rocks and ruts and all these different things coming at you. And so she was trying to process that and figure out what technique to use. Lots of obstacles out here on this section. Um, you know, take it easy on the corners because you come around and it's just deep sand. I need longer legs. <laughs> If you don't have momentum, you don't have much. There are a couple of falls in the sand, which is always fun when everybody comes out of it the other side laughing. <laughs> okay, now we go. Glad it worked out. It wouldn't have worked out on it. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, please. So for this section. I ran my suspension in max, which is as high as it'll go. It's better for the soft stuff and, and the technical stuff, especially the jagged rocks. I don't hit my skid plate or my foot pegs, but I, I can't touch the ground for anything. That's the only problem. So we just rode skirting the hills here, a little bit of red dirt. Uh, when it's dry, I think it's an intermediate road. You know, I consider myself an intermediate rider, and I think as long as you go slow and pay attention and pick your line, uh, that's a totally doable ri ride. On top it's gray betonite and down here it's red clay. Both of those are a bad idea to do when wet and pretty much impassable. Okay. Uh, I was just gonna say it's a little muddy there. I'm gonna put the helmet back on, carry on and be a lot more mindful 
of this uh, this dark colored um, surface here because it's slippery. Wyoming state is called the Equality State. It was the first state that um, elected a woman governor and uh, it was the first state in the nation that gave women voting rights. So it's kind of fitting that now we have an equal amount of men and women on this trip. Girl power! <laughs> it definitely changes the dynamic having more women on the trip. You know, I can't explain exactly how, but it was really fun and some of us didn't know each other and, and got along really well. So I think it was, it was pretty cool. It's funny in Wyoming, it seems like there are either easy roads, back roads, or there are rugged, difficult roads. We did find some great rolling, flowy, double track that people are just going to love, but it's hard to find that stuff. You know, I want the community to tell me how hard this is because I think it's moderate level with hard and easy, but it might be that they think it's quite hard because the hard sections are, are quite hard. I like the fun riding, the two-track, twisty, flowy, uppy, downy, a little bit of technical. And all of the routes have some of that, but some of them that's maybe 10% or 20%. I felt like like 60, 70% of this route was like super fun. <laughs> I feel a lot more accomplished being able to get through all of these obstacles, I'm, I'm really ready to take on the next challenge. She's got grit and courage, and she pressed on through this. Her speed was getting better and better and better until the, this last day. Today, I look in my mirror, and she's, she's right there. It was really fun to, to be there with her in the beginning days, and then to see her at the end of the days, and just seeing the sense of accomplishment that she had. It was really quite nice. It's not even about who is a woman, who is a man. It's all about you as a person and whether or not you have the stamina, the grit, the drive to be a part of this team. That's why BDRs are so great. You progress as a rider, you progress as a teammate, and you can just feel so proud of this accomplishment because it is a great accomplishment. Each time we do one of these expeditions, there's always some days that really stick in my head. Um, and one of them was the final ride up to the Painted Rock Lodge trail ride out to the campground was so awesome and campsites were all along the lake. I think that was my favorite evening out of all of them. <laughs> Swimming time. Wow, that's cold. It was so nice, so refreshing. Oh my god, I feel so much better. We're gonna go have dinner in a cool old historic lodge tonight. I think the rooms are really cool and I like like the wood, the logs, and then you can see the lake, right? And the beds are so comfy. I hope when people go out and ride this BDR, they, they get a chance to go to the lodge and camp along that lake. I think that was my favorite evening out of all of them. Now we get to have a campfire. We got marshmallows, chocolate, graham crackers. There's trees for hammocks. This is a little bit of BDR paradise. I think my favorite spot that we've stayed the night so far on the route has been the Painted Rock Lodge. The lodge is really cozy and comfortable, so it's like got a great night's rest. And, and then you wake up and you're in the living room and they, he's got a fire and he's got these cute little dogs and just beautiful trees and lake. That was definitely my favorite. My advice to anyone that's looking to ride this route would be to make sure that you are completely prepared. Really, this is a, a route that requires, I think more than any other BDR, requires self-sufficiency. You should have a spot device or a satellite phone, uh, extra water, extra fuel if you don't have good range on your bike, uh, first aid supplies, tools, tubes, all that stuff because 
you might be in the middle of a section and, and have an issue and it might be hours before somebody gets to you. You know, I must have pinch flatted. There's a lot of embedded rocks, very large embedded rocks. I don't remember hitting one that hard, but maybe it was a real super sharp one. Bryce, we're gonna <laughs> help make this situation a little better by taking advantage of it. We're gonna make some espresso. How's that sound? Put the lid on, lock it down, and then we pump it. We gotta get it to like a certain PSI. It's a little bit of a workout. I pulled the, the core out. Thank you so much. This is disappointing because we really need to make some speed today. There's a chance for a storm and this is just not what we needed. So we'll do this as fast as we can. This section, which goes over Woodchuck Pass, starts hard, and then it finishes with another expert section that's very, very tight in the trees, like a, almost like a slalom course. The team has been giving me crap about my <laughs> recollection of all these expert sections. And he's like, well, you know, it's, it's probably got some rocks, but maybe not so many, or like, oh, there are super deep ruts, but maybe, maybe it's okay. It's probably not hard. It might be hard, but probably just a little hard, but not much. I just gotta ask who wants to go. You know, it's gonna be technically challenging and our, our team is deciding to split up here. The first two miles were very challenging. Gradual uphill with rocks and ruts. and You know, you've really got to keep your momentum going. I would say, compared to Bridger Peak, that Woodchuck, for me at least, felt a little bit harder. You really had to pick your lines and there were sections where there were no good lines. You kind of had to just pick and choose where you wanted to go and commit and get through. The expert sections of this route uh, are, are pretty challenging. I don't know why I always just go for the expert route. To me, it seems like that's where all the fun is. I wouldn't want to go around it and then have all the guys get off the expert section and say, oh, it was the best thing ever. You should have seen it. It was crazy and there were ruts and rocks. And then I would be like, no, I missed it. I'm so glad that I decided to do it. At first I wasn't sure, a lot of people were saying they didn't want to do it, and then I got, kind of got a little apprehensive. I don't think I would have done these expert sections had I been out here riding this route by myself or solo. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. I think if you've got a good team with you, then you, know, you can get through anything. I think if I can just get it rolling. Yeah. Be more careful on picking the line. This is good. It wasn't pretty, but it was effective. I've ridden a lot of Colorado passes and this was similar but had its own flair to it for sure. Uh, lots of elevation gain. It was almost a deserty two-track kind of feel with lots of embedded rocks, uh, but the views up there were phenomenal. And then as we tip down at the last chance to opt out and Simon the photographer was on his bike next to me and I looked at him and I'm like are you going and he's like if you're going I go then we're going and down over the hill we went. The big downhill that Bryce was saying was going to be so difficult uh, and end up being okay but then 100 yards past that was a, a boulder field I really struggled through. Simon took the good line I was like dude I had nowhere to go so I kind of like threw myself into the rock garden you know. You couldn't really see where you were going and the bike was bucking and <laughs> it was nuts. She just comes riding right through like a ballerina. <laughs> Maybe more like a bull in a china closet but not a ballerina. Nice job. You're a badass. No, you. She, she did take the easy line, I think. Wait, she, I, what? Went, once they cut that, You just took now. the easy line. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> so we are at Woodchuck Pass proper. 9,650 feet, something like that. And now you can see we're starting our decline. Still in the expert section. Easy 
gonna go. There's a ranch truck up here. You okay? Oh shit. You alright, Bryce? Yeah, the dust sucks. Oh, so Paul was in the right line filming all these beautiful sheep and I was in his dust and I took the left line and I hit the edge of one of those ruts and I'm telling you it was a it seemed like a slow speed crash but oh that hurt we weren't going for we were like first gear maybe second gear but he went down and just felt an immediate sharp pain he knew it was bad judging by the looks of that my wrist is broken it's pretty rare that something like that would swell up so quick. Uh, I wonder if we have an ace bandage or something we could wrap around my arm. I mean, the more, the less it flops, the less it hurts. We put a buff around this and we actually doubled it up to make a tube that's like doubled. And then we took all of my maps for this and uh, rolled them up in one big wad. There's probably at least 10 sheets in here. And then we put Gorilla Tape on it. Ah, I'm so mad. <laughs> So after this water crossing, I went back to see where Paul and Bryce were, and I found Paul talking to a couple of ranchers. Howdy. Hey, just wanted you guys to know my uh, friend I'm riding with, he crashed. He's, yeah. He broke his wrist. He's just right up the way there. Yeah, right. I'm going to go try and catch up with my friends and uh, see if we can get him, get him out of here. I just wanted you guys to know he's there. I came riding down to catch up with the crew, and I saw this rancher. He offered basically to um, to drive Bryce out. You want me to give him a ride? Well, if you wouldn't mind, that'd probably be pretty helpful. He said he was going to be heading out here soon anyway. He was dropping off water for the sheep herder that's part of, of that guy's ranch. That bike's fine. I just need to get him to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can help you that way. Okay. He's getting loaded up. Uh, some friendly locals in a Jeep are taking him back to a rancher. He was gonna take him back to the main road. Then he's the rancher that's been, his family's been um, raising sheep up here for 52 years. He's fourth generation. And so he knows where he is. <laughs> and we don't. <laughs> There's your truck. Yep. Dogs, we got a horse, we got all kinds of resources. I'm totally fine. I've had a couple Tylenol. Um, the pain's not that bad. I just gotta go get some x-rays. That looks like a lot of fun, actually. Uh, until normally. Until, until uh, there's something stupid. Until it's not. Yeah, I'm used to baby bikes. Yes, it, something bad happened, but everybody stayed calm, right, took care of business, made a plan, bam, 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 got it done. Well, we have to go back and retrieve the bike. I'm gonna ride in the back, and we're gonna go back up into the expert section and grab Bryce's bike. I've got my feet on the the uh, rider's foot pegs, and Jocelyn's feet are on top of mine. So I think this is the first time I've been on the back of a motorcycle in probably 30 years. <laughs> and there's no one I would trust more than Jocelyn Snow behind the behind the bars. Nice job. Bring it in. That's my girl, Jocelyn yeah. Snow. It's probably we should just do a walk around on the bike because we don't know if there was any damage, just to make sure that you don't risk yourself any further, right? Looks like you're in good shape. Well, it's a good thing that we caught Paul on the way back, because what didn't we have? We didn't have the key. We got it now, so that's good news. All right, so let's get this thing started and get back to the, to the gang. I'm a BMW guy, but I've heard really good things about this bike. Bryce has put some really good upgrades to it. Whoa, sounds pretty sweet, I'll tell you that. And off we go. This bike is fun. Holy shit, is this bike fun. Well, I can see why Bryce gets himself in trouble with this bike. This bike is a blast to ride. Holy crow. So, so now we got the bike back and we'll see what the plan is. Yeah, we've got three riders and four bikes here. So I guess we got to sort that out, huh? Super bummed you can't finish it, but grateful that you put it together for us. That's what I hold the trip. You're welcome. It was really sad for me to see it end that way, but you know, thinking back, I mean, he, he 
rode 90% of this route with us. He had a blast. And his last wish, as he was getting in, in the car to go to the hospital, his last wish was that I go ride that last little piece of the expert section because he really wanted me and the team to experience it. There's certain things I want these guys to ride because it's fun and because we need to. It's like part of what we're doing. It, I'd, I'd be really upset if they didn't. Cam and I are gonna go ride it, do a little bit of filming so that uh, Bryce can know that uh, someone on the team enjoyed uh, his hard work putting that together. Paul and I had this really great rally through the woods on Bryce's section that he made us do. It was just challenging enough. That was crazy fun. Here's to Bryce. Yeah. Speedy recovery. Bryce. Hey, Bryce. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing yeah. route. Great leader. Awesome. Get well. Texting back and forth with my oldest daughter, Hannah, who's 21 years old, I said that we saw a moose and she said, send me the photos. And I was like, I don't really have any photos. It was so far in the distance, you could just barely see it. And then this morning, we're sitting at breakfast. Somebody said something about, there's your wildlife. I looked out the window from the dining room table and saw a full big moose with a giant rack just walk by the window. I was like, oh my God. The name of the restaurant was Moose Crossing and the moose was chowing on some leaves just out, outside the window. I ran out the door and ended up getting a great photo framed with a canoe in the foreground. We haven't had any internet, so I haven't sent it to Hannah yet, but I cannot not wait to send her some of those pictures. So, last day everybody. Everybody turn on your Santas in the mesh uh, mode, uh, please. As adventure riders, we're fortunate to have access to vast public lands for motorized off-highway recreation. Wyoming offers miles and miles of the most spectacular landscape and diverse terrain. And so when BDR riders come to Wyoming to ride this route, I hope they will remember that this is a privilege and it comes with a big responsibility of helping to protect the land and the environment. This means staying off private land, only camping in designated places, not disturbing wildlife, and of course, leaving no trace. We are all ambassadors of the sport, and we need to remember to always be respectful to local communities, landowners, and to all those out there enjoying other forms of recreation in the backcountry. So coming to the, the last day of, the, of, of a BDR, you've traveled, you know, a thousand miles or more together with this group of people that are your friends. You definitely get choked up because you, you spent a lot of time and a lot of miles with, and, and uh, had some really great experiences. So for me, the last day, it's pretty emotional. I would say that the highlight of the trip for me was riding, you know, shoulder to shoulder with Bryce, just like the old days, and experiencing a route that was just by far, I think, the most fun BDR route that I've ridden. Uh, I, I think we've done it right. We, we've found a, a mix of the right riding terrain and uh, the right scenery. It's one of my favorites, I think, just in terms of the camaraderie uh, between the team, the uh, landscapes that we went through. I had some expectations, but it actually surpassed my expectations. I think this one is gonna be a really special BDR. I mean, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. It was an amazing eight days, and I wanna keep going. We made some memories over the course of the last 10 days that I'll, I'll never forget. The last possible light in the sky, I'll just keep trying to get the shots and keep filming because I know that when I go to sit down and edit the movie, it, it, I'll be really happy that I did that. It's hard not to be excited about it. I mean, this is it. I feel like I'm not the top of my career, but at least filming the subjects I want to be filming, and um, I feel, feel lucky to be here. We're out here. There's nobody out here. We've seen almost nobody on the trail, no other adventure bikes. I think that's something for riders to be aware of, but it's also the allure of this route. I for sure feel a sense of accomplishment uh, getting to the end of, of the Wyoming BDR. We all work well together and we have fun and it's, that's what it's all, all about. Coming up to the end, there was one section that we thought would, would have, was going to be a, 
an expert section. No one had really ridden it yet, and it turned out that I think it's going to be on the main route. So that's a lot of fun. I'm glad that that's going to be on the main route. Uh, and then we came down this sort of hard pack, rutted downhill, and the highway's just right there. So that's it for us. So we're about 20 miles from the official finish of the Wyoming BDR, but we're going to have to stop right here. There's a big forest fire, and unfortunately this is the end of the line for, for this run of the Wyoming BDR. Yeah, and you know, this is really like a new reality for the BDR riders because currently uh, we're in August and most of the BDRs in Western states, uh, at least some sections of them are, on, you know, have fire. So um, this is the new reality that we're facing as riders and um, this is kind of a fitting end, you know, to this adventure. But um, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun and unfortunately, you know, we, we do have that, that section scouted, so it'll be on the map, and uh, it, is, it is what it is. And uh, looking at the upside, we rode all but 20 miles of the Wyoming BDR. We had no rain, we had great temperatures, we had pretty good visibility. There's a little bit of smoke off in the distance, but we really had a good run of the, you know, the first running of the Wyoming BDR, and it was incredibly fun, beautiful, so I feel pretty grateful. Yeah, me too.